Alright, so today I have this Sky RC IMAX B6 version 2 charger with me and I've specifically got this to charge some of the 6S LiPo batteries for my FPV quad and I have the original version with me. You also get clone version of this charger but since I got this for about $32 which is actually very cheap for a 6S charger I decided to buy this. I also have this Sky RC S60 charger with me but since this can only charge up to 4S batteries, I had to purchase a new charger. So in this video, I'll unbox the charger and share the features uh, this charger has. So here we have the specifications. So input voltage from 11 to 18 volts. So we have to supply DC power. And this does not have any AC to DC power uh, adapter. So you'll have to buy a separate power adapter to power the charger. And the maximum power is 60 watts to charge the battery and for discharge the maximum power is 5 watts then the charge current range is from 0.1 amps to 6 amps and the discharge current range is 0.1 to 2 amps and the types of battery that are supported are lithium polymer lithium iron phosphate then lithium iron batteries or the 18650 cells and then lithium high voltage cells so all of the lithium polymer batteries are supported from 1 to 6s followed by nimh and nicat batteries from 1 to 15 cells and then we also have lead battery voltage so if you have a lead acid battery you can charge that as well on the bottom side we have a few icons so microprocessor controlled so basically the chip that controls the user interface and the programs so lithium battery balancer discharge and we also have the custom program mode so you can store uh, some of the settings for your charging settings and there's also a temperature sensor on the side of the charger so that way you can monitor the temperature of the battery while it's charging but the temperature sensor is sold separately so if you want to use that, we'll have to buy the temperature probe additionally. So in the box, we have a few wires. So this one has two crocodile clips. So with this wire, we can power up the charger with a car battery. So you simply connect the crocodile clips to the positive and the negative of the battery terminal and then plug in the barrel connector to the charger so you can use this on the field or when you're outdoors then we have this xt60 wire with the open end at the other side so you can solder a connector to this side if you want and this one is a xt60 to a dean's connector so these are the wires that are included in the box then here is the instruction sheet which has all the information on how to operate the charger and then we have the charger it's got a shiny and sparkling finish on the body on the left side we have the power input ports so if you want you can also plug in a lipo battery to power up the charger then here we have the buttons to adjust the settings for the charger. Then on the right side is the output port. So this is where I'll connect the battery that's to be charged and the balance port for the lithium battery. And here we have the temperature sensor port. So we can connect the temperature probe on this side. And on the bottom, that's the serial number. And here's the sticker to check if the charger is genuine or not. So you can scratch this and check it on the website. Now, if I compare this to the S60 charger, there are a few differences and I actually don't like some of the features on the IMAX charger. So the first one is this uh, XT60 output port. I actually prefer the banana plug for the output power because that way we can use the existing 
power cables and then connected to the charger but since I'll be using this mostly to charge 6s batteries for my FPV cord and those usually have the XT60 connector so I can compromise on that so now to power up the charger I have this DC power adapter with me and I got this from a local electronic shop and this has an output rating of 12 volt 2 amps and the charger can accept from 11 to 18 volts and I guess up to 6 amps so now I'll connect the power adapter to the charger and then power it up so it's got that traditional interface uh, as we get with the other chargers so here we have the battery memory option so we can set so we have the option to set 10 memory options in the charger so the first memory option I can set for a 6s LiPo if I want to change that I can click on the start and then use the increase or decrease button and then change between the option so LiPo then battery voltage which is 6s and then the charge current so at the moment I have a 650 milliamp hour battery so the half C would be around 0 0.3 amps so that's what I've set for the charge current then we have the discharge current so if you want to discharge the battery you can oh, use the discharge feature then discharge voltage you can set that between 3 volts to 3.3 volts then terminal voltage cutoff if you want you can adjust this so if you want to limit the maximum cell voltage to let's say about 4.18 volts you can set that in the TVC or the terminal voltage cutoff or if you want you can also increase this to about 4.22 volts but the best would be to leave this as it is and then I can save the program so so the first memory in the memory option is now assigned for a 6s lipo battery and similarly if I want I can set a few more memory options for other batteries then we have the system settings so in that we have safety timer so if you want to assign a time limit for the charger uh, you can do that so you can either toggle the timer on and off and then adjust the time limit then here we have the capacity cutoff so if this is enabled the charger won't exceed the capacity of the battery when it's charging so I'll set this to 600 milliamps for my 650 milliamp hour battery I wish if there was an option to adjust the numbers in increments of 10 so that way we can uh, set the capacity precisely the next is the temperature cutoff so for that we will need the temperature probe and then it has to be connected to the temperature sensor port so since I don't have that I can turn that off then we can adjust the temperature unit either in Celsius or Fahrenheit the next is the rest time so if you're power cycling an NIMH battery then the ideal duration between each cycle can be adjusted from here then we have the NIMH sensitivity delta peak value it's set to 4 millivolts 
I don't change this I leave it as it is similar for the NICAD battery then we have the option to either turn off or turn on the buzzer or the key beep so that way when we press the buttons on the charger we won't hear the beeps I'll turn that on and then you have the option to either disable or turn on the buzzer so that way when the charging is complete the buzzer will indicate once the charging is completed or if there's an error it's highly recommend that you keep the buzzer on so that way if anything ever goes wrong the charger will alert you then here we have the DC input low option so we can set the threshold for that so here you can feed in a value which will uh, basically prevent or shut the charger once the external voltage is below the threshold amount that we set here so for example if you power the charger from a car battery and usually that's about 12 volts and if you set this to let's say uh, 11.5 volts so to prevent the car battery from discharging we can set this to uh, 11.5 volts so that way we can prevent the external battery from over discharging and the range for this is from 10 volts to 12 volts and then to reset the charger we can initiate the load factory settings by uh, holding on to the enter button and then we have the firmware version displayed over here so those are the system setting options the next is toolkits now this has all the regular options that we have in the other chargers as well it's just that it's been renamed so if i enter the toolkits we have the option to check the battery voltage so i'll connect my success battery so the balance port and then the power connector so if i click on enter we can see the individual cell voltage so since this is a six cell battery we have the voltage reading for all the six cells the next we have battery internal resistance so the resistance value for individual cell in milli ohms the next we have a DC to DC converter option and then if you have a few batteries for your DJI drone you can use this charger to charge those batteries as well and then we have the various battery options so lead battery NICAD battery NIMH lithium high voltage battery lithium ion so if you have a battery pack which is made from 18650 cells then you can uh, use this lithium ion mode to charge those batteries up then there's lithium ion phosphate so if you have a mini rc car which are usually powered with lithium ion phosphate batteries then you can use the lithium ion phosphate mode to charge those batteries and then we have the lithium polymer which is widely used for various rc applications like fpv drone or rc car or rc boat so 
so we have lipo balance lipo charge storage if you want to store the battery for some time especially when you're not operating the model then lipo discharge so so the highest amp we can select is 6 amp and because i have a 650 milliamp hour battery i'll set the amp to 0 0.3 amps and then i can adjust the voltage so i have a 6s pack with me and i specifically got this charger to charge a 6s battery so here we have it so then to charge the battery i'll hold the enter button and then confirm so now the battery has been charged and here we can see the percentage of the battery that's been charged so right now the battery is 97 percent charged up and we have the battery voltage displayed over here if i click on the increment button we can see the individual cell voltage if I click on the decrement button, we can see the end voltage, input power voltage, then the external and the internal temperature readings. So the battery is full. It was anyways full, so there was no point in charging it. So I'll plug in a 4S battery. So here we can check the internal and external temperature readings and the temperature cutoff threshold the capacity cutoff if you set that and the safety timer and the end voltage so that's all there is to talk about this imax b6 charger from sky rc the only drawback that i find is this xt60 output port the best would have been a banana plug on this side. So if you found this video helpful, you can like it and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any other questions, you can comment them below. So thanks a lot for watching.